Hello there, my name is Mackenzie. Wait, how do I do my intro? Hello there. My name is Mackenzie. Welcome or welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for being here. Today we are doing my Frankenstein mega vlog. I'm so excited. I read this in high school so this will be a reread. When I read it in high school I didn't really enjoy it that much. I was bored and it was only upon after reading it and reflecting upon said work that I actually came to enjoy it. And then I heard a nice little comparison between it and Paradise Lost and how a lot of it was talking about Paradise Lost in that kind of sense and I wanted to read both but it didn't stop there because when I was out and about on my travels, I picked up Frankenstein by Jeanette Winterson. This is following Mary Shelley in Lake Geneva in 1816 as she is inspired to write the story of Frankenstein. And then also following in Brexit Britain, a young transgender doctor called Rye is falling in love with Victor Stein. So we have two parallel stories going on there and I thought that this would be just a really nice fun uh, companion to these other two books that I had. But it also didn't stop there. I didn't pick up this book with the intention of adding it to this vlog, but I really wanted to talk about it uh, in relation with this vlog as well almost as a like Frankenstein adjacent story. So this is anatomy, a love story, and from what I understand this is not about bringing somebody back to life, but about experimenting on the dead bodies of human beings because this is the 1800s and science is failing us. So uh, we have our female scientist and she enlists the help of a man to basically go and dig up these bodies for her. And I felt like that story of companionship in a very strange situation could be a great conversation piece in all of these uh, books that I was planning on reading already. At least this uh, TBR stopped here. So right now I'm in the uh, middle of my read read of Frankenstein. I am on chapter two. This is like a slog a little bit in the beginning. There's a lot of like this captain that I don't care about and like I know they're trying to build this conversation about companionship and everyone's desire for it no matter how it comes into your life but needing other people to understand you and understand your plight and man oh man do like I I relate to that but there was a lot of like smaller details that I just couldn't care for and it's kind of it's a lot you know like the chapters are long I mean 34 34 pages for one chapter my plan is to not do a spoilery reading vlog but more so have a conversation about what all of these books bring to the table how they compare to each other and what can, really can be said about Frankenstein and how it inspires our literature moving on man that sounds like an AP paper join me for the review of Frankenstein Did I request thee, maker, from my clay to mold me, man? Did I solicit thee from darkness to promote me? Dr. Victor Frankenstein tells us of his fall from grace and the dangerous hunt he is on for the creature he has made. From Victor's childhood to the creature's creation to the hunt in the Arctic, Victor tells all.
this point in the video, it has become plain, plainly obvious that this video is probably coming out in November. Mainly because I there a lot of things happen in October. They always happen in October for me. Huge life events always happen in October for some reason. And it prevents me from doing all the things that I like doing in October. Like decorating for Halloween super early. Like doing all of the fall things that I like to do because I'm busy with life things. I recently got a new kitten. He is seven months old. His name is Jack. I'll pop a picture right here because I don't know how much you'll see in this vlog of him. He was a feral. He slowly got adapted to me and my husband. We opened the door to our house and he walked in. So now I have another cat. And I love him to death. He is my, he is my sweet cheese. Because he's my best friend. He's my pal. He's my homeboy. My rotten soldier. He's my sweet cheese. My good time boy. While I wouldn't change anything, <laughs> I have spent the last week taking him to various doctor's appointments, cleaning him as much as I can while he'll let me. Uh, he has a long hair, as you saw from the picture. He's absolutely adorable. I love him to pieces. He's a softy, a sweetie. Even the vets told me when they did his neutering. So, he is great, but he has also uh, kept me from reading as much as I wanted to and uh, doing a lot of things that I wanted to do. Also, I got sick. And I don't really get sick too often, but when I do, I am on my ass. <laughs> I can't do anything. I'm so- I'm destroyed. I was destroyed yesterday. And then and then, we started playing video games again. Which is always- it always happens this way. <laughs> And my videos end up coming out slower than I would like. So I'm playing Overwatch 2. I'm going back and forth with the idea of uploading somewhat of raw footage of me and my husband and my friends playing Overwatch 2. Possibly to this channel. Possibly to a secondary channel. Anyways, you're, are you here for any of that? Probably not. You're here for this one, right? This is the one. I'm on chapter 9. And, oh, there we go. All right. Mm, chapter nine. So what I can say about this so far is that I think I have a greater appreciation for audiobooks now more than ever because it's rough goings. It's not written the best. Like Dracula, at least, was written in a way that while it was old, it felt somewhat modern. Like I could imagine myself reading that during high school, you know, and, and, not, and not being too big of a deal. Because in high school, I didn't read audiobooks. I didn't start reading audiobooks until I want to say this year. It changed everything for me. But in high school, I didn't read audiobooks. But I definitely think that I could just read the physical text of Dracula and would have been okay and probably would have enjoyed it. Now, with Frankenstein... Girl, <laughs> it's so boring for what's actually happening. How can that be? Like, he's... He's already made the monster, right? He has already run away from said monster. And his brother has already been killed by that monster. And I'm near bored to tears. <laughs> what is this? Why is this? It's so rough. It's rough. Because, because I read Frankenstein when I was in high school, I have an appreciation for having read it after the fact. Having reread it in my adult life, I maintain that I, that that is my belief that reading Frankenstein is not as appealing as having had read Frankenstein. You know, like it's just I I, I just want this to be over so I can get I can have it fresh in my brain. You know, just stop. <laughs> this book is so saturated with themes of companionship and loneliness, and parenthood, and like almost a mirroring of Victor's life to the monsters. And what's kind of funny about Frankenstein is by the time you read Frankenstein in high school, you're already familiar with the work. If you have been shown a lot of American pop culture, you already know what Frankenstein is, who he is, the monster, all of that stuff. So that way when you go into the story and you're reading Frankenstein's backstory and 
like the Victor Frankenstein's backstory and his childhood and how he grew up and how his parents were, you already are seeing the dissimilarities, the things that are, <clears throat> the things that are very different between Victor's childhood and the monster's childhood. So it's like ripe for the picking of any American English teachers, you know, like they were gonna, if, if they were gonna choose any of them, I'm not surprised they chose Frankenstein because this is just ripe, rot. It's just, there's a ton of themes and quotes and dialogue. Like, of course I studied this in school because they wrote it that way. But I do appreciate that it doesn't feel too heavy handed. It is something that is obvious, but it doesn't feel heavy handed. Um, so I like that part. We'll continue on and I'll just check back in with you at the end of this book and when we move on to the next one. Bluey, inside voice. Oh, can we get the bill? We finished Frankenstein. It was, it was exactly what I thought it was going to be. You know what? Even worse than that, I fully expected my adult brain to love the way that this was written. It did not. It was still a struggle bus and it put me to sleep multiple times, causing me to have to go back in the morning and reread something that I vaguely remember, but not really. So it, that was a little bit frustrating. However, this was a bleak conversation on companionship and creating a being and not being a good parent and like there's a lot of like layers here um but i am excited now to just move on <laughs> we've jumped and now we can move on to our upcoming tbr with the books that are coming out coming out with the coming out what am i talking about with the books that i'm going to be reading Moving forward. With the books that I'm going to be reading moving forward, I am just going to introduce them, do a brief little summary about them, and then touch base with you after the fact of me reading them, comparing them to our original source material as well as to each other, and then just kind of giving them an overall rating as well. The first book that I'm going to be picking up next is Paradise Lost by John Milton. Um, this is technically poetry it's poetry so you know let's let's just get into it Hey, hi. Uh, I guess the next time you were supposed to see me is when I had this book, I believe, finished. So that way I could tell you about it. Well, let me tell you about it. Because I got to page 75, book two. It's boring. It's so boring. And like... While the summary of what this is, is interesting, how it is written puts me to sleep. So I've just come to realize I am not a classics girly. It's not for me. If it's for you, more power to you. I, not for me. I obviously, like I always do, uh, didn't want to DNF it, even though I hated everything about it, and so it put me in a stasis mode, and I decided not to read forever. And you haven't seen me in a while. So now that I have officially decided that we will be DNFing this, and I have played about 20 hours already of Slime Rancher 2, I think it's time that I 
move on with this vlog and we can read something that I'm just a little bit more interested in, which is Frankenstein uh, by Jeanette Winterson. So I found this at a bookstore while me and my friends were out at a museum. And then we went to a bookstore and I found this and it was on sale and I just thought it was so cool and I'm very interested. So we're following two perspectives, um, a scientist in Brexit and then also Mary Shelley herself. So it looks like, let's see, two different perspectives and it is about 340-ish pages long. So not too long and the words are nice and big on the page. It's really nice to look at. So shouldn't take me too long. I don't think the audiobook is very long. So I will tell you more about what this is once I get a good portion into the story. About 100 pages. I never like to read you guys what's on the flap because oftentimes I feel like the flap or the back of the book lies or misleads or really gives a lot away of the plot. So I will just let you know what's going on in the summary about 100 pages in and then the next time you'll actually see me sitting down is at the end of the book to talk about it. Told in alternating perspectives, we follow Mary Shelley as she develops the idea for her novel, Frankenstein, and Dr. Rye Shelley as he falls in love with Victor Stein, an AI scientist. The story is further interspersed with historical documents, basing Shelley's point of view in reality. Hello, it's like the very next morning, which is pretty crazy because I didn't think that I was going to get through this that fast, but it was very intriguing. I'm not going to say that it was very easy to read because a lot of the conversations are like cerebral and there's a lot of discussion about life and your journey and creation and evolution and a lot of scientific debate as well mixed in with some horrific aspects and some storytelling we do get somewhat of like a biography of Mary Shelley and the trauma and horror that she went through in her own life uh, that surrounded her writing of Frankenstein and I think that this was it was very well written now content warning for on page sexual assault it was graphic I had to take out my earbuds like I do every single time and skip the whole parts figure out why it was important and move on with my day this didn't seem like it was that important though because surrounding the event like there's there's nothing that comes of it the characters don't talk about it anymore there's no there's there's nothing and it's awful and i i am assuming that that is why they are trying to talk about it that they're bringing it up at all is because that come on i'm trying to have a serious conversation over here that sexual assault does happen to trans characters and it happens frequently and sometimes there is just nothing to do about it except move on and accept that it happened and just figure out how to live with yourself after that. But there was just no content warning and like I really would have appreciated one because I struggle reading these days just physically so I always have to have an audiobook in and it's like... 10 times worse having somebody speak it into my ear. It's it's not fun for me. So I really hated that part. But other than that, I feel like everything that was being discussed was, was really important. We do have a trans character in the character of Rye Shelley, which is the second perspective that we're following. Um, it was very interesting to kind of see how the discussion of transness was coupled with this discussion of Frankenstein and recreating yourself and evolution as well. It broadened the discussions that Frankenstein itself brought up. Um, so it was really interesting. I 
enjoyed everything but that one scene. So as long as you know going in that there is something like that happening, I think that uh, you, you'll be okay. And if you skip it, you're not really missing much because it doesn't really affect the story too much. Um, now, regarding Frankenstein, um, it is about Mary Shelley writing Frankenstein, creating this story. Um, it is kind of like, I guess, a fan's, a, like a fanfic of Mary Shelley's life a little bit um, that uses historical documents to place everything that has happened and kind of just empathizing with a person and if you knew that Mary Shelley by the time that she was 25 had lost four children either in childbirth or to sickness and then also lost her husband of eight years I think that you could probably assume of how she was feeling and all of that was really cool and then like I said the discussions that were brought up in Frankenstein are mirrored here but also developed and broadened into more of a scientific discovery I guess so this was very cool I really enjoyed it I gave it a four star um, and just the writing so many good quotes so many good discussions um, and I think that if you're not somebody who enjoys just a book about like conversations and thought and intellect then maybe this isn't really for you because it's not really exciting there are some horrific aspects but it does kind of mirror Frankenstein the book um, fairly well in the sense that it could be relatively boring if this scientific material is not what you're kind of interested in already so go in knowing that and next, we will be reading Anatomy, a Love Story by Dana Schwartz. I think it is very funny because both Frankenstein and Anatomy have the, stub, the, sub, bleh, the subtitle, A Love Story, uh, as their subtitle. Um, so reading them together and kind of really discovering how as well Frankenstein originally is somewhat of a love story, a parental love story, and how that love can be corrupted. So I will see you at the end of Anatomy. Blood will stain your hands. You might find the blood may even stain your very soul. We follow Hazel, who, instead of focusing on the upcoming season in London, is focused on getting into an anatomy class taught by Dr. Beecham III, and Jack, who works as the man behind the curtain in more than one ways. Surrounded by all these dead bodies and mysteries, is it any wonder that love blooms? Anatomy, you were never a friend to me. I hated this book. This was so lame. And what was even lamer was that like I had I had like good good issues with it the majority of the way through because a lot of my issues were character wise, but my biggest issues came with how the plot was handled and that ending. That ending. I am so upset and like this is a duology but like I, the ending doesn't need more explanation because the ending contradicts itself okay let's start at the top we'll work our way down very thing the first thing that I notice is that our main character Hazel this bitch who what is she a time traveler she acts like she doesn't know what it's like to be in the 1800s in London Edinburgh like I don't understand. She acts like she's a teenager. She is 16, but in the 1800s, they didn't have this idea of teenager. They had this idea of child, adult. And then once you were an adult, you did adult things, like, like what you were expected to do. And a historical fiction for me, I always want my main female characters to like rise against and rebel and do all of the things that they need to do to have their rights. But at no point in this story did I feel like our main character, Hazel, was doing that appropriately. I felt like a lot of the time she's has like 
no understanding of the world around her, of why her fiance doesn't want her to study medicine, um, of why he treats her the way he does, and why she just gets dragged along with it. Like, it's one thing for her to be so, like, up in the air, like, oh yeah, I don't have to do anything, you know, that is expected of me because I'm me and I'm doing science, which is fine. But then when he's like, you're going to marry me, right? In front of all of these people. Why didn't you say no? She says yes, like a fucking fool. Like, I don't, I don't understand her character at all. And then it's a love story. But did you root for the love story at any point in that story? Because I didn't. I didn't like Hazel. Jack was also just there to be in love with her. What's his motivation? Love. The one time that they spend more than about 15 minutes with each other, uh, they're making out. For what reason? They have nothing in common with each other. And yet here they are, in love. Sure. Uh, and then that ending. First of all, we get like the love story as the major plot. And in the background, we have some sort of fantastical story going on with like people being abducted and like the f secret formula to living long is like around and like, so we have that. And then at the end of this story, for whatever reason, the main bad guy doesn't kill her. He totally could, but he doesn't. Don't know why. He kills Jack. He doesn't kill the girl. Um, and in fact, he offers her the vial of immortality. He's like, here you go. We could be friends one day, maybe. But that's the thing, right? He doesn't force her to take it, and he definitely doesn't force her to stay with him because they're both scientific minds, but he just lets her go with it? What did he think she was going to do? Because this idiot goes straight to Jack and gives it to him and is like, drink this, you'll live after they hang you, and then we'll run away and start our life together. Which I was like, oh, that's cute. At least it'll be a good ending. And he's like, no, you can't waste your life on me. And she's like, okay. So let's talk about the life that she is not wasting on Jack. Because she doesn't get to get married with that guy because she turns him down because he's a tool. But also, she's just alone. She lives alone. Her mother doesn't live with her anymore. Her staff left. She's a doctor with patients, and she's alone. And that's the life Jack wanted her to have without him. And then in the epilogue, he sends her a letter, I'm waiting for you. Fucker, why? You just told her you didn't want her to be with you and waste her life on you. But now you're waiting for her? You weren't the genius in this relationship. You didn't come up with another vial of immortality. Why are you waiting for her? This was such garbage and I hated it so much. And I will say this, that at least in my Dracula vlog, I felt like that one I got a lot more books that I liked in that one. But with this Frankenstein vlog, no, no. I think the only one I actually really enjoyed and gave a high rating for this was Frankenstein. And that still had an on-page sexual assault scene that, like, was not good for me. So, like, Frankenstein retellings. What are you doing? What's happening here? I also like how it's like green, green, pink, pink. So if you have any Frankenstein retellings that you would like to recommend instead of these, except maybe Frankenstein, because I do still recommend that one, um, but if you have any other recommendations for me or anyone watching the video, leave them down in the comment section down below, and maybe if we get enough, I could do a part two. Um, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I hope you have a good rest of your day, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!